Good day to everyone. I, Sophia Micaela Bina Verete, together with Ms. Christine Joy Gaitan, Ms. Vanessa Agramon, Ms. Angel Lou Istasio, and Ms. Jonalyn Silapan, will discuss to you the interactive lecture demonstration, report discussion, and direct transductive. Let's discuss first the interactive lecture demonstration. In the contemporary time, teachers are using interactive lecture demonstration. Interactive lecture demonstration engage and challenge students in activity that confront their prior understanding of a core concept. The activity can be a classroom experiment, a survey, a simulation, or an analysis of secondary data. The interactive lecture demonstration strategy can be utilized in the self-contained classroom with 30 to 40 students or in a large group discussion. What is interactive lecture demonstration? Interactive lecture demonstration or ILD is a technique where in the lecture part precedes the demonstration. The combination aims at concretizing the teacher's lecture with an actual demonstration. So in interactive lecture demonstration, um, lecture comes before the demonstration. So with this combination, the lecture and demonstration, this supports the teaching process of teachers. When to use interactive lecture demonstration? So ILD can be used when teachers need to show or demonstrate some concept. This method can be used whenever the purpose of instruction is to inform, enrich, or motivate students. Why use interactive lecture demonstration? Research shows that students acquire greater understanding of course material when traditional lectures are combined with interactive demonstration. So, when using interactive lecture demonstration, this helps the learners to understand the core concept clearly and effectively. How to use interactive lecture demonstration? Effective interactive lecture demonstration required that instructors identify a core concept that students will learn. Interactive lecture demonstration are most effective if they focus on a single or related concept that is frequently misunderstood by the students. Second is choose a demonstration that will illustrate the core concept, ideally with an outcome different from students' expectations. And third, prepare written material so that students can easily follow the prediction, experience, and reflection steps. In interactive lecture demonstration, we include these three steps, predict, experience, and reflect. Predict links new learning to prior understanding predict the outcome of the demonstration individually and when with a partner students explain to each other which of a set of possible outcome is most likely to occur next step is experience experience engage the students with compelling evidence experience the demonstration working in a small groups students conduct an experiment take a survey, or work with the data to determine whether their initial beliefs were confirmed or not. And the last step, reflect. Reflect helps students identify and consolidate what they have learned. Reflect on the outcome. Students think about why they held their initial belief and in what ways the demonstration confirmed or contradicted this belief. After comparing these thoughts with other students, Students individually prepare a written product on what was learned. Prediction, the key feature of interactive lecture demonstration because the students envisage or foresee the outcome before they begin an activity. Why prediction matters? Prediction matters because students are more engaged, students connect their in-class work with prior knowledge, students are required to document their prior thinking explicitly, and students connect their in-class work with prior experience. Techniques for prediction. Prediction encourages students to be as specific as possible about their prediction by requiring them to make a choice from possible answers. Example, instead of predicting whether the target variable will increase or decrease, 
ask students to choose from a range of percentage or other numerical answers. Students are required to explain their choices in writing. Prediction requires students to choose from selection of graphs, the one that best represents their predictions. Example, students can choose between a linear or exponential or a cyclical function. Choosing a graph helps students think in a more expert manner. Gaining practice with choice of variables to be studied, the choice of variables to hold constant, and their representation in a, gramma, in a graphical form. Interactive lecture demonstration sometimes requires students to complete two separate pages, one with their prediction and one with their thinking after the demonstration. However, Reddish and Hammer 2009 advocate the use of single page in order not to send students the message that their intuitions about the physical world are generally misleading and, irrele and irrelevant to the physics class. They prefer for students to refine their intu intuitive knowledge rather than set it aside. Experience In experience, the demonstration can be a survey using a student data, a simulation, an analysis of data from a secondary source, or lab experiment. The demonstration may be conducted by the instructor in front of the class or by students in small groups. Good day everyone, I am Christine and I will going to discuss the type of demonstrations. Class, the first one is the classroom experiments. They are extensive set of appropriate classroom experiments that allow students to see concepts and actions. Before taking part in an experiment, students can predict the outcome so that the attention will be focused on the main concept to be learned. Reflection of the experiment can help students appraise what was learned and transfer this understanding to the other context. So, the classroom experiments can be done by a teacher or a student as an, as an instructor. So, the all experiments involve collecting observation or observing actions to try to answer a question or solve a problem. Um, the classroom experiment do this as a part of a class to help students learn more about the material they are studying. In this case, the hypothesis to be tested will generally be derived from material contained in a textbook or other course materials. So, the classroom experiments is a visual representation. Um, Research experiments generally involve both control and treatment groups in order to facil facilitate comparison. In a classroom, an observational experiment where students see what happens can also be useful. So we have there we have I have a, an example in a political science, the students may investigate voting behavior by participating in a election exercise. So they are demonstrating as a political science student, they can demonstrate kung paano as a Filipino paano tayo bumoto or exercise our rights to vote. The second one is a classroom surveys. Survey data from the students' own lives can show the application of concepts. Because everyone's data is needed, surveys involve all students. And because of the outcome is not predetermined, survey creates a sense of uncertainty that may be absent in textbook presentation. So in the classroom surveys, you can use your student to collect, to collect the data na kailangan mo to present or to justify yung data or yung topic na dinidiscuss. You can use your student to participate in a class. So, for example, you are asking your student kung what are their vote or their ideas kung about, okay, for example, 
you are asking kung they, will, they are believing na ang mga ilonggo, tikalon, they're gonna raise their hands so, they can col- so you can collect the data na kailangan mo. And the other one, then the other question is kung a students can raise their hands kung they believe na ang mga ilonggo ay hindi taka, hindi tikalon and exage lang sila mag-express ng feelings. So by that, you can collect your data and you can demonstrate it and explain it to the students para mas maintindihan nila. The data can also contradict sa textbook. So the third one is data analysis. Analysis using data is most effective if the data show a surprising result. Data analysis can be re- relatively straightforward. Asking students to graph or otherwise manipulate a given set of data while, while more sophisticated data analysis may require students to apply data on their own or to conduct statistical analysis. In using data analysis and demonstration, you can also use a graph or pie chart, pie chart to demonstrate to demonstrate your data to your students. For example, the lesson was um, you were, the students were asking or you were, the lessons was all about uh, no, um, the unemployment rate of the Philippines. So you can use the graph, the first graph, um, the information was all about the unemployment rate of the Philippines five years ago, or the 2016 or 2017 the data ilalagay doon sa first graph and the current unemployment rate of the Philippines. So by that graph, compare mo yung data and then you can explain it mas maintindihan ng estudyante. So next is simulations. Teacher can ask what if questions that could be answered by a simulation. The interactive demonstration approach can be used to engage students in this analysis. First, asking them to make prediction, including if possible, a description of their underlying economic model if it is not well 38 specified. So simulation is an imitation of a situation or process. So, it will be here um, after the demonstrator demonstration of teacher, you can also demonstrate it pagkatapos niya. You are mimicking kung ano yung ginagawa ng teacher. You're gonna put it on a process. Simulations require the use of models. The model represents the key characteristics or behaviors of the selected system or process. The, the last one is reflection. In the reflection part, the students record and report the results, identifying differences between what they predicted and according to the demonstration. So, the reflection is the last part of the demonstration where they, after the demonstration, they were gonna write the reflection what they've learned kung what are the kung tama ba yung prediction nila before next start yung demonstration or ano yung natutunan nila during the demonstration dito na yun sa reflection so why the reflection matters reflection matters because it is important for students to practice newly learned concepts in a variety of contexts otherwise students may connect the concept with one specific situation missing its generally applicability there are activities that promote reflection number one is the think pink share where the students were gonna pair and we're gonna uh, we're gonna think a questions or a teacher can give a question and you're gonna the students gonna pair into two or three groups and discuss the questions the ideas about the questions and share it to the class 
Okay, another one is a short essay. Is one among the activity to be given to the students. It could be done by asking asking them to start with before I completed today's activity. Uh, I thought and after completing the activity, my understanding has changed or not changed because blah blah blah. blah. The third one is classroom assessment technique. Ask students to complete an assessment task by starting with this. The most important thing I learned today is, and what remains unclear to me is, blank blank blank. The fourth one is, show a short video on a certain situation. Show to a class a short video about specific and relevant situation, for example, a short video in which an educated individual answer a question incorrectly about a question about a concept under study. Ask students to write a short essay explaining why that individual believes as he or she does and why that belief is incorrect. Number five is require students to make a short video. If time warrants and the concept is important, require students to make a video interview with an indicated college staff about the concept and their study. Activities to promote transfer to new context. Number one, change one or more variable in the demonstration. Repeat the predict, experience, and reflect steps. The second one is sequence interactive lecture demonstration. Begin with a simple one variable demonstration before asking students analyze a multivariable situation. Third one is apply the concept in new situation. Use a context correct rich problem beginning when you are putting the students in a novel situation that will require use of the concept under study. The fourth one is write a variation on the problem. Students can could do so in a small group and send the problem to another group to be solved, a technique called send a problem. That's all. Thank you. So hello. Hello everyone, I'm Vanessa G. Agraman and I'm going to report the 10 ways to improve transfer of learning. Looking to keep the students' skills current, the importance of being able to transfer what you learn in one context to an entirely new one cannot be overstated. Once you understand how to go about transferring your knowledge to new contexts, however, you could change job or even careers and still find ways to apply your prior knowledge to the situation and problems you might face in the new world. So there are 10 ways to improve transfer of learning. The first one is the focus on the relevance. Research shows that when learning is relevant, students can connect what they are learning to what they already know and build new neural connections and long-term memory storage. So if you want your learning to be engaging and able to remember it in other contexts, it is important to establish early on. To establish relevance early on. Think about how you might apply what you learn, what you're learning today in your future job or everyday life, and then try to tie it to some of your short or long-term goals. The second way to improve transfer of learning is take time to reflect and self-explain. Understanding the concept inside and out, which is why it is important to take time for reflection and self-explanation. Research shows that self-explanation can help an individual identify any correct assumption, led to a deeper understanding of the material and ultimately promote knowledge transfer. So when you're learning about something that's completely new to you, take a moment to think about how you would explain it to your own words. Whether this means using simpler words that are easier or for you to remember or finding a way to connect to the new information to some information to something you already know by using real word examples. The next way of 
of transfer of learning is use a variety of learning media. Another way to facilitate the transfer of learning to new contexts is to use as many different learning media as possible from text and imagery to video and audio. Even if your course doesn't have visuals or narration built into it, you can try to find a way to supplement that what you're learning by using a variety of educational resources such as YouTube and, and TED Talks or iTunes U, edX, and Course Era. So number four is change things up as often as possible. It is easy to get stuck in a rut with your learning by studying around the same time in the same location and by using the same study strategies every day. But when you get used to constantly studying in the same way, it can be difficult to transfer knowledge you can acquire to a new environment and situation. This concept is known as desirable difficulties because although introducing certain difficulties into the into learning processes will initially feel uncomfortable, it also encourages a deeper processing of materials. Number five is identify any gaps in your knowledge. Without, com without a complete understanding of the concept of information you're learning, transferring it to the new context will be more difficult. It is important to identify any gaps in your knowledge and then work on strengthening your weaker areas. So one excellent way to do this is through practice that testing. You'll able to see exactly what types of questions you're consistently getting wrong and what topics you have yet to master. Similarly, practices will also show you which topics you have already mastered, which allow you, which allows you to focus on the areas that need the most work. Number six is establish clear learning goals. Establishing clear learning goals will give you a better understanding of what you are trying to get out of your learning and how you might later transfer your that knowledge and apply it, it in your work or personal life. If you know what the expected learning outcomes are, you will be able to focus on the right materials. When setting learning goals, it's better to be specific rather than general. So you'll be, you'll be able to measure your progress as you go along, but make sure your goals are realistic too. For example, if you're, if you're learning a new language, making it your goal to be fluent within one month is very realistic. Making it your goal to learn the vocabulary and phrases necessary to go shopping or eat or eat out at a restaurant is more doable, however. Number seven ways to improve transfer of learning is practice generalizing. Generalizing is the ability to transfer the knowledge or skills you gain in one setting to, an, to a new one. It is all about seeing the bigger picture and looking for more widely applicable rules, ideas, or principles. For example, a child that learns to attack wooden blocks can generalize that skill and later use it to build more elaborate creations using Lego bricks. So when studying a new topic or concept, think about your past lessons or experiences and look for patterns and relationships. You can then determine whether this whether this general generalization can be supported by other evidence you know of. Number eight is make your learning social. If much of your learning happens when you are alone, it can help to have a chance to discuss it with others. This gives you the opportunity to explain what you are learning in your own words and apply your knowledge to new situations. Research also shows engagement and benefits long-term retention. If so, in make your learning social, even you're not learning on the job,
job or in a group setting or in a group setting you can try online tool tools like twitter blackboard edmodo cora and others second way to improve transfer of learning is take time to reflect and self explain understanding the concept inside and out which is why it is important to take time for reflection and self-explanation. Research shows that self-explanation can help an individual identify any correct assumption, led to a deeper understanding of the material and ultimately promote knowledge transfer. So when you're learning about something that's completely new to you, take a moment to think about how you would explain it to your own words. Whether this means using simpler words that are easier or for you to remember or finding a way to connect to the new information to some information to something you already know by using a real word examples. So the last way to improve transfer of learning is find daily opportunities to apply what you have learned. Applying what you have learned at school to real-world problems takes a lot of practice, so it is important to look for opportunities to apply what you are learning in your everyday life. So, for example, if you have been studying a new language, make a conscious effort to remember the foreign names of different objects around the house when you get up in the morning. If you just attend a customer service training course, Try to employ one of the new strategies you learn about when, de when dealing with customers on your first day back, and back at work. Good day everyone, so let's proceed to the reporting discussion and I am Angel Lubia Stasho, one of the reporters of Group 5. So, what is reporting discussion? Reporting discussion is a technique wherein after students makes a report, the class can actively engage in an interesting discussion of the various ideas and concepts shared with the classmates. So in reporting discussion method of teaching, it is somewhat like the problem-based learning where it is student-centered and that the teachers are guided by the side, meaning they are facilitators and coach of student learning. They can also act at times as a resource person rather than as knowledge holder and disseminator. Uh, this method of teaching helps students learn how to speak in front of a group, which is broadly applicable prof professional skill. They learn how to prepare material for public presentation and that this helps to improve their speaking skills. So in reporting discussion, it also helps students to create innovative ideas when students come up with creative and interesting slides to illustrate their talk. The use of presentation aids makes for a much more interesting talk and the creation of such aid can help develop the student's confidence. For an instance, a teacher uses this kind of method. She assigns the students with a topic which they will be reporting. The student is the one who is going to make the report and by that, he will be going to have a deeper understanding about the assigned topic to him for him to report it properly. So in this method, it also enhances not only the confidence of the students, but the confidence of the student to talk in front of a lot of people, but also it helps students to sort out facts about the topic that they are going to report. So, when to use the reporting discussion? Reporting can be used when teachers give topics for the students to be reported or presented, followed by the discussion of the topic. So, this method can be used when the teacher wanted the students to have a prior knowledge about the topic since they are the one who will be reporting. 
and teachers can enliven the session by asking some questions and by adding relevant and clarifying ideas. Discussion is done after the report to tighten up some loose points. So after the reporting, here enters the discussion where the teacher is the one who will going to talk. The teacher may add some information or she may correct the misinformation that was reported by the reporters. So that's all for this reporting discussion. Thank you. Next is we have the direct transductive or what we call the DT. So what is direct transductive? Direct transductive is a technique in which convergent thinking is emphasized. It is highly constructured, moving from particular to specific. So, the direct transductive is a technique that the teacher uses inside the classroom. So, maaaring magbigay ang isang guro ng isang problema o issue sa mga mag-aaral at ang mga mag-aaral ay ma-exercise at ma-practice ang kanilang critical thinking, and for them to come up with a possible solutions sa isang problema o issue na ibinigay ng kanilang guro. So, when we say convergent thinking, it is a, it occurs when the solution to a problem can be deduced by applying established rules and logical reasoning. So, madidevelop din dito yung logical thinking na isang estudyante at ang kanilang Logical reasoning. So, maaring posibleng makapag-isip ang mga estudyante ng mga posibleng solusyon sa isang problema. At ito rin ay ma-exercise -e ang kanilang mga critical thinking skills. So, when to use the direct transductive? So, the direct transductive can be used when teaching specific motor skills word association skills, map skills, and the like. And it can be either problem-solving based learning for the students. So, dito, maaaring makapagbigay ang isang guro ng mga aktibitates pagkatapos ng isang leksyon na maaaring particular sa motor skills ng isang estudyante, association skills, and map skills. There are steps on why to use direct transductive so number one it directs students attention to the items to be associated or related so bakit bang mahalaga na magbigay ang isang guro ng mga problema o issue na related sa mga nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran ngayon upang mas mabigyan natin ng pagkakataon ng mga estudyante na makarelate sa mga problema o issue na ibinigay ng isang guro at madadirect ang attention ng mga estudyante sa isang issue na yan o problema na yan at makakapag-isip sila kaagad ng mga posibleng solusyon para sa problema na iyan. So, number two, it provide opportunities for practice. So, sa mga uh, problema na inilatag ng isang guro, maaaring makapag-isip ang mga estudyante ng mga posibleng solusyon na maaari nilang ma-practice sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na buhay. Maaaring napagdaanan ng isang estudyante yung problema na yan o yung issue na yan. Maaaring nakikita lagi ng mga estudyante o ito ay present sa kanilang komunidad or sa ating bansa. Na maaaring uh, mabigyan natin ng opportunity ang bawat estudyante na ma-practice nila kung paano sila makakagawa ng solusyon sa bawat problema. And number three, it provide assistance to students who need it. Kagaya nga nang sabi ko, maaring mayroong mga estudyante ang nakakaranas ng ganoong problema or issue, maaring nakikita nila sa komunidad nila or sila mismo ay naka-experience nito. At itong direct transductive, itong kanilang uh, critical thinking skills, ito ay makapag-provide ng assistance sa kanila kung paano nila uh, ma-handle yung isang issue na yon o yung problema na yon or kung paano nila malulutasan ang problema na yon sa pamamagitan ng pag-iisip ng mga posibleng paraan 
from particular solution to specific solution. And lastly, number four, it provides for application in other situation. Maaring yung problema na inilatag na isang guro ay makakatulog sa mga estudyante upang yung mga posibleng solusyon na naisip nila ay maisabuhay nila at may apply nila in real life situation na sa tuwing ito ay kanila makikita o mararanasan ay hindi na sila mahihirapan sapagkat ito ay kanila napagdaanan na at ito ay kanilang natutunan na sa loob ng klase. So, yun ang mga uh, bagay kung bakit nga ba kung bakit nga ba kailangan nating mapag-aralan ang direct, transductive at kung ano nga ba ang mga uh, positive and advantages ng direct transductive sa learning ng isang estudyante.